That's what we're going to do today then. Well, it's, it's it was raining. It's actually clearing up a bit now. So <laughs> that's because we decided to yeah. go out in the van, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, it's gonna... supposed to be raining all day. Yeah. And we're going to leave the car here. Yeah. And take the take the motorhome out. Thought well, we'd have a bit of shelter whilst we're out. Yeah. And we'll have a little look round. And uh, just don't mind me coming through. <laughs> <laughs> it's home coming through. Coming through. <laughs> so yeah, so we're gonna have a little drive out. Can't get out that way. Oh god cool, no. <laughs> <laughs> no exit no, he says. That's just to prove you can't get out that way. No, you can't get out that way. Um <laughs> try and look all professional. Yeah, yeah. We'll cut that bit out then probably. Yeah, probably, won't we? probably. You know how professional I am. <laughs> uh yeah, so um that's what we're going to do. I think you said head towards Maryport, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, we're going to go left on the A66 and go yeah. to Maryport. There's a Roman fort there, isn't there? It's oh, not, is there? Okay. It's not far from Hadrian's Wall, so. No. Kind of quite interesting up that way. Yeah. Plus, we need to get some fuel. Yeah, well, that was the other thing. We've got 83 miles on the, on the clock. clock, so we thought yeah. as it's raining, it'd be a yeah. brilliant day to take the van out. Just stock up. Yeah, because we're here for six days. The other thing I want to do, and I'll perhaps I'll do it a little bit later in this video, is uh, do a November update because I've got, got a little bit of news for you. Yeah, yeah, so I might do that. Yeah. Yep. So watch this space. I'll yep. talk to you later. Okay then. Bye then. Something banging, but press yeah. the car. Sorry, rattling. Yeah. Doing nothing unusual about that. It's quite a steep climb out of here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not really a problem for the motor. No, I think it was for one of ours, wasn't it? Yeah, was it the little so. bister? Yeah. Struggled. Ter terribly underpowered, that was. I think it had about six horsepower. horses. between Keswick and Penrith, aren't yeah. we really? Yeah. Go to Keswick on a drier day. Yeah. Yeah, it's the weather's not it's not gonna be like this all the week, is no, it? No, no, well hopefully not. That's Braithwaite. Braithwaite. Lake. Lake, yeah. This west point of Hadrian's Wall was in this <coughs> area. Oh, excuse me. Go on. So, yeah, we, we did. We have been here. The streets are a bit narrow, aren't they? 
seem to remember that. Yeah, we were in Bob's car, weren't we? Yeah. A little, we'll take the little doggies for a walk first, I think. Yeah, we came here what four or five years ago? Yeah, about four years ago. Yeah. So this is Sen, Sen House Roman Museum. We've got like a Roman lookout here. Yeah, we're on Friday, so it would be open. Just don't know if dogs are allowed in. No dogs. I'll have a quick look at the watch tower. the Solway Firth. So from here it says the Scottish side is visible. Mm, not so sure. Cocudbury Cocudbury Bay over there. Dal Beatty Criffle Southernest Point over there. Can't really see anything. So there are some surviving earthworks of the fort. And there was a civilian settlement buried in the fields to the north of the fort. They found a large number of Roman altars in pits in 1870, in the 18s, uh, followed by excavations in the 1880s. So you can sort of see the lumps in the in the field. I guess that would be. In the, within the coastal defence system along the Solway, which extended Hadrian's Wall beyond Bowness. So there's a Royal Naval Battery built in 1885 on land leased from the Senhouse family. Because of its proximity to the houses and camp road on the other side of the fort, the family system had a good standard of construction and detail in the finish. It remains one of the very few coastal batteries of this period still, still surviving. That's what I think it's like that, then. Yeah. So presumably that was a gun. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Right. Right, we'll go for a little walk and then we'll take the doggies back to the van and we'll have a look around the museum. We'll have some lunch. And we'll have some lunch. And then we'll go around the museum. Okay. So in the second century AD, on orders of the Emperor Hadrian, the Roman army built a large fort on top of these cliffs, taking advantage of strategic position overlooking the Irish Sea and the Solway Firth. It was known as Alorna. 
fort covered 6.5 acres and was capable of housing a thousand soldiers and became the command headquarters and supply base for a chain of fortlets and watchtowers that extended the Roman frontier along the Solway Firth from the western end of a Hadrian's Wall and they, a settlement grew up around it which was occupied for 280 years apparently Rooms of the settlement are still visible in the 18th century when historical travel writers describe paved streets and stone-built houses with tiled floors and slate roofs. The stones from the fort and the settlement were taken to build the new town of Maryport and all the standing stones disappeared entirely. And what they found was a lot of uh, Roman altars. Okay. Well, it looks like we're down, going down to the front. Right, we're down at the front. I was saying it looks a bit like there was a railway here. Right? Might be my imagination, or was that just the, the promenade? Go on, go down there. Oh. Sandstone, isn't it? Right, I suppose if we were going to go back, we'd go back that way, wouldn't we? Okay, go on this way. This way. Okay. <laughs> Stick to the path. Yes, you. Down a little, looks like it's some sort of garden here. What's this all about? Nice. Oh, it's just a bit of information about the plants. I'm saying uh, coastal conditions can be harsh and unforgiving for plants. So they've got sort of, mm, I don't know. <laughs> We've got some plants here. They're good at yeah. the good at the coast. It's a nice little garden. Got your anchor there. Did you miss us, Tara? Hey. Yeah. Go far. Go on. <laughs> we found some steps up. Go on then, girls. Go on. Come on. There we go. Take the pedestrians a bit down here, folks. Right, that was quite some walk, wasn't it? Oh. You know, all the way past the museum, down to the, the front, all along the front, um, all the way up there, somewhere. up there somewhere. Oh. Phew, go and get some lunch. Right, come on, folks. In. Go on, we'll come in. That's it. Oh. Alright, we've had lunch in the van. Yep. A couple of rolls. So what was the end? Is the other end of 
the, the wall. wall. Yeah. Yeah. Walls in 110 miles. miles. It's not a massively long wall, is it? If you were building it in <laughs> whenever it was. Yeah. I think this is a really long wall. You would have thought this is a blooming big long wall. It's a bit about Mary Court. Hadrian's Wall is famous around the world for the symbol of the Roman Empire strength and ambition. The remarkable structure stretches across the north of England from Cumbria's west coast to the banks of the Tyne in the east. Well known sections of Hadrian's Wall between Newcastle and Carlisle are often photographed and visited, but that's not where the frontier ends. A system of forts and towers stretched along the Cumbrian coast along the Solway and south to Ravenglass. Similar Roman defences were stretched around the world through Europe along the Rhine and Danube, around the Mediterranean to the deserts of North Africa. These ancient barriers are still important today, bringing people together as part of the frontiers of the Roman Empire World Heritage Site. Yeah, so the wall doesn't actually end here, it's the bonus on Solway where they actually Yeah, the yeah. So where are we on here? We're, where's this Mary Oh yeah, we're there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're there, and that's where the, the wall ended. Yeah. Yeah, but it was one of the forts here. Yes. So the frontiers of the Roman Empire World Heritage Site, Hadrian's Wall. All right. Let's go and have a look in the museum then. So this is a Senhouse family tree, and it, they've <laughs> presumed they down the bottom there. More recent more ones. More recent ones, and they've traced their family tree all the way back to Walter de Sel Sewin House. Bolton Gosforth in 1200. Wow. How far have you traced your family tree? About 1750. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's an imprint of a dog's paw there. So why They've got a, like a timeline going all the way around. A survey, a magna, magnetometry survey. So obviously that's where the buildings were then, behind the museum. Yeah. Just saying that's when they found the altars mm. of ploughmen uh, in 1870. It's a large stone. He informs Humphrey Senhouse, the owner of the camp farm, and he found 17 altars. Senhouse, a family of collectors. Always get you to try a toga on, couldn't I? I always get you to put that helmet on. Well, this helmet. Yeah. Or this one. Yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> a serious-looking man there, isn't he? in quite good condition there. It's a colander. So this was the barracks then. They were living quarters of eight men. Oh yeah. So that was only eight of them. I suppose it was had a little flat them each, didn't they? I suppose it was quite good really, wasn't it? Think about it. Was eight in a row, isn't it? Yeah. It's not eight in all things. Is it? Yeah. Look, there's, there's beds in there. Oh, I see. Right, yeah, OK. Oh, it's not quite as good as I thought then. <laughs> Just those eight people. <laughs> that would be a bit cramped, yeah. wouldn't it? No, if you were yeah. the chief, the commanding officer, yeah. you'd a bit more room. Yeah, the slaves are in, wouldn't you? Yeah. Front hall, latrina. And triclinium. And the cubic... Cubiculum. That's your bed, isn't it? There. Yeah. Yeah. That was quite good, didn't it? Yeah. It's quite nice. Should have got 
fairly well to do. Yeah. Somewhere to sit. Somewhere to cook your food. The slaves will be in there though. And we've got the garden in the middle. The front hall. Yeah. That's the office in there. So you'd have your laptop in there? Yeah, because he's got these yeah. scrolls on the shelf. Got all his CDs on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> a bit about them finding the towers. It's a Joseph Robinson was first archaeologist to excavate a tower in 1880. He excavated tower 25B at Risehow to the south of Maryport. Imagine finding these towers. Mm. That's an aerial picture of it. Sort of look. That's a mile fort there, a mile fortlet. Offerings to the gods. So it says, You're going into battle. Am I brave? No. Am I good with a sword? No. Do I want to run away? Yes. Right to here. It says, Make an offering to Mars to make you brave and strong. Or make an offering to Minerva to make you help you make the right decisions. <laughs> Go on, I mean, you had four, four to choose from, so. <laughs> Maybe jump when I came around the corner. I thought it was a woman. That's what it was. Almost looks like modern clothing, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. Because the shoes. Well, shoes, yeah. And here on the solway, if you go further up the side. Right, so this one says on it, I'll just translate it for you. It says, To Jupiter, best and greatest, and to the divine spirit of the Emperor Marcus Manius Agrippa, Tribune, set this up. There. You read that from there. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifice, life symbol by, symbolized by blood, was a most fitting gift for the gods. So these are the altars that the Senhouse family found. Lots of them, most of them are dedicated to various gods. Made from the local red sandstone by soldiers could become exempt from the more un unpleasant and tiring fatigues like dig ditch digging and wood chopping if you knew how to carve a stone. Altars dedicated by commanders of the first cohort of Batasians at Maryport AD 60 to AD 80. Isn't it? Training and punishment on the second century parade ground. There's someone getting whipped over there. Ouch. The Vulcan, the god of metalworking. Part of a statue to the god Vulcan. Looks <laughs> very nice. The water nymphs. People in Roman Britain believe that water nymphs were gods who lived near streams and wells. That's these two characters up here, I guess. You can see that they're playing a game of drafts or something like that. Oh, what's this? 
players take turns to put the counters on in squares two at a time. The ducks, the large counter you put on last, players take turns to move a counter one square forwards, backwards or sideways. If you sandwich your opponent's counter between two of yours, it can be captured and removed. And these are the excavations between 2011 and 2012. Some sort of catapult. Serpent stone. And the idea was that the um, carving was a phallic symbol. And uh, the Romans took the idea you know, that carvings of phalli were effective protection against the evil eye. End of Roman Britain, that uh, painting's called. British chieftain stand in a partially derelict fort area, looks on a pair of on as a pair of boats row out to the rescue of a vessel which has been attacked by raiders in the Solway. It's over there, isn't it? I'm saying these are like post Roman, aren't they? These ones. Fifth century. Some people thought they were still Roman, didn't they, in the fifth century? Yeah. After they'd gone. Cremation burial. Cook. Second century. Bur black burnished ware cooking pot. Contains remains from a cremation. Mm. You wouldn't want to mix that up with your cooking, would you? No. Did we go in that pub? Yeah, I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, we we went in that pub. The captain. No, no, no. Sure. Thought we I did. We went to a blue one. Or did we? You think we went in that one? It's got Dog's Welcome. Yeah. Oh, and the 
Captain Nelson, I think. Let's stop here. There's plenty of space, isn't there? Just about to see the um, Roman Mary port fort up the top there, can't you? That's where we were earlier. Yeah, it's the museum, isn't it? The yeah. battery. And the battery, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a big harbour. Imagine what it was would it would have been like at the height of its fishing. And coal, wasn't it? Coal, on yeah. There. It's quite possibly the ugliest boat I think I've ever seen. I thought you, you said one was for sale. Yeah, one was for sale. <laughs> that little one's for sale. <laughs> I thought you meant that. I thought I'll buy this and do that one up. Yeah. I assume that's some sort of bridge, isn't it? Yeah, it's Counter, uh, counterweighted. Counterweighted bridge. Ellen Port Bridge. Oh, Ellen Foot That's Bridge. Bridge. Which is what it was originally called, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Ellen Foot, yeah. Preserving the past while building the future. It's one big bridge. So we were going to update you with our little bit of news. The news is that we've um, we met. Tyne Valley Motorhomes when we were at the Thirsk Motorhome Show and um, we were looking around the Malibu A-Class, the, I think it was the Malibu 430 mm. and he mentioned that that was their demonstrator or, or rather it's Malibu's demonstrator that Tyne Valley Motorhomes use and he said that they've had a number of people who've uh, driven it and he recognised us from Harrogate show, was it? Or no, the... no, the Scottish show. Met him at the Scottish show and we're looking around the auto trials. Yeah, so this is Jonathan from Time Valley yeah. Motorhomes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'd, we'd, we met him before. So he sort of recognised, oh, you're Bob and Jenny. Yeah. He said, yeah. Uh, would you like to, to borrow the, the Malibu? So that's our news, is that we're going to borrow that Malibu uh, 430. Um, it's an A-class motorhome. It's, I think it's six and a half metres, so it's quite a bit shorter than our own motorhome. It's... Uh, twin rear beds at the back up a couple of steps up a couple of steps so, so, it's, so it's that'd be totally different for us really, it, it's it? not uh, it's not a layout we'd choose i guess yeah but it's nice like when we tried those other layouts the french bed and yeah the little van it's nice to try out different layouts and because yeah. we can walk in them and say oh, i'm not sure about this but yeah but until, until you actually, actually yeah. live in it and try it out you, it's been a, well even the french bed one was a pleasant surprise wasn't it yeah 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 yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive over to Durham Grange. We're going to spend a night at Durham Grange. Then we're going to go to Tyne Valley Motorhomes. Where are they? Can't remember where they Near are. Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle. We're not quite sure exactly where they are, but I've got the address and everything. Yeah. But I can't so we, it. we're taking our own van over there. We'll leave yeah. our own van with them whilst we've got the Malibu, uh, and it means we can transfer things from one van to the other, which should make things it's easy. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going up to Edinburgh. And then a couple of nights at Edinburgh. A few I think nights. it's th it's three or four. Three or four nights at Edinburgh. Yes, so is. we'll have a little drive around with the Malibu. We've got Bob and Aileen with us. Uh, they can test out the the passenger seats. Yeah, and what yeah. it's like to eat, you know, yeah. meals and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going down to Melrose. Yeah. For a, f a few days, and then we're going to drop the van off and then come back. So it's going to be quite interesting. We've never mm. had an A-class motorhome before. Well. 
we did have one yonks ago, that Pilo Galaxy. I knew you were going to correct me then. Well, as soon sorry. as I said it. As soon as I said it. <laughs> <laughs> you should say the right thing, then yeah. I'd have to correct you, would I? Yeah. No, that the... Pilo Galaxy, I remember that's yonks ago. Yeah, so. well, that was about 2003, that's wasn't about... it? So last century wasn't yeah, it yeah almost so, last century well it yeah. was yeah, yeah. so uh, it'd be yeah. interesting to see how we get on with an A-class with the uh, twin um, beds. high up beds yeah with a garage yeah uh, with um, a fairly smallish bathroom with a yeah. shorter motorhome yeah smaller bathroom yeah um, but an A-class mm. so I'm quite fantastic, excited about it yeah fantastic views that's I mean, well yeah that's the thing about the A-class you get such great views out the front don't mm, you mm. so hopefully we'll, you know, we'll do a little bit of touring around and bring you some nice nice vistas but it will be November when it's, uh, yeah yeah so not no. not very long days no, but no. no so anyway we filmed all of this on Jenny's iPhone 11 yeah, Pro. so we've no idea what the so no sound idea what the is sound like qualities. or what it looks like. Yeah, or... well, we can see what it looks like because we well, can yeah. see ourselves, <laughs> oh, <God>. which is <laughs> one big advantage of doing that on a, on a phone. Oh, isn't it? yeah, you can yeah. see ourselves. Yeah. yeah, true. So probably ought to stop waffling. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think we're going to make our way back now. I think we're better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. That's good. That when you do yeah. that, you <laughs> give us a thumbs so up. Yeah, you? that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Remember to subscribe, hit the notifications icon if you want updates of our, our next uh, trip. Oh, the weather's actually not been too bad today. No, it? no, so, uh, came in the van partly think, because we thought, we thought it was going to rain gonna, all day. It be raining all day. But yeah, but it's not, it'd be nice coming out of the van. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the car's all lonely now. Isn't yeah, it? you think yeah. we've left it there. Yeah. So anyway, stop waffling and we'll see you soon. Yeah, bye, bye then. then.